Welcome, Welcome to, to Doctors, Doctors Rating Trends. Trends. This is a program where two identical twin doctors take a look at the health trends of the day and tell you whether or not they're total and complete bullshit or maybe there's something to them. I am Dr. Jess Jones, and with me as always is Dr. Jackson Jones. By way of background, I have an MD, which I then use to go into the venture capital space and professionally call bullshit on the latest trends of the day and figure out what to put money behind for about six or seven years. And uh, moving on to my brother, who then went on to apply these trends. I've been in clinical medicine for 10 years, so I get to watch them play out in the real world um, on the yay or nay side. So today we're going to be analyzing pheromones. Is it something that you should drench yourself in if you're uh, thinking that you're going to go out at night and attract the opposite sex? And so I would like to call it the mystery of love, love at first, first whiff. whiff. Because if you smell them, it's, it's that, that magical something that people talk about uh, where they have no idea why they're attracted to this person that's no good for them, but there's just something there. So is it pheromones? And can you copy these pheromones and uh, use them uh, to attract the opposite sex? So first of all, the where and what of the pheromones. So what are these things? It's a little hormone-like chemical messenger that a lot of animals have uh, that are picked up by the nose. And these are used for all kinds of communication and attraction and help identify each other, you know, if you look back through evolution. And the ones that they think that they've identified in humans are androsterone for men. And then there's androsterone and copulin for women. And these pheromones are secreted by a few parts of your body, specifically out of your breath, out of your armpits, which is axillary sweat, uh, through breast milk, through urine, through semen, and also through vaginal excretions. So basically your mouth pits and your crotch are where these pheromones come out of. And it's also the reason why uh, when you see doctor, uh, dogs that are trying to get to know each other, they immediately go in and dive bomb the crotch area. And probably to some, degrees, <clears throat> to some degree why they might even dive bomb your crotch is to pick up on these pheromones. But that's assuming that they actually exist in humans. So if we move on to the next slide, the bottom line is that these good love and vibes are coming again off of these areas that I mentioned. Uh, and right there in the picture is one of the steroids that, or one of the pheromones that I mentioned, the androsterone. And the theory is that it's emitted, goes through the air and is picked up by an organ called the vomeronasal organ. Uh, which has been identified again in animals, but may or may not exist in humans. There's been extensive studies to this, but uh, that is the basic pathway. Uh, and the question is, does it work? Is that why that you feel that pulling attraction to somebody? So this was studied and rather famously back in 1971, a woman named Martha McClintock uh, ran a study that said that pheromones of women living together would make them sync up their cycles. And so after a little while of women living together, this phenomenon that a lot of people can verify, the uh, cycles of the women sync up and they all are on their period at the same time. But later on, this was debunked. They still don't know why the sync up happens, but it is not because of pheromones, according to some studies. So if we go to the next slide, uh, one thing that we need to understand about pheromones, we know for a fact that they do exist. They were first identified in silkworm moths and uh, the pheromone was identified as the way that the male silkworm moth would actually attract the female. And since then they've been identified in fish, they've been identified in rodents, been identified in dogs, they've been identified in just about every animal except for the human and they're known to be used for everything from attraction, which is the obvious one, uh, to uh, communication skills too, to help identify each other. If we go to the next slide. Uh, so the question is, you know, first of all, why haven't these been found in human beings? And a big problem is that you're talking about attraction and there's so many factors that go into attraction 
that you know trying to figure out if a particular uh, scent it actually gets people going has been extremely difficult to study. It'd be very expensive. It'd be a very highly tailored study and nobody's just put the money out to it. That said, it has not stopped people from uh, pulling together what they think are the pheromones and putting them into uh, vials, uh, vials that, that you, you can, can put, put on, on as cologne or perfume to attract the opposite sex. So this is one that I found online, Fairzone which is said to have a, a really high, high quantity, quantity of these active, active ingredients. You can see the anthrosterone that I mentioned, mentioned earlier. earlier. Then, there's then there's other derivatives of it that are thought, thought to potentially act, act like, like pheromones. And, and so, so that's, that's the question, question is, is this your love potion, potion number nine? nine? Can, you can you track, track the opposite sex, sex if you're wearing this? Or green? Green? They're, they're going to gravitate, gravitate to you because of the organ in their nose that is yet to be, you know, ideally identified. Humans is going to draw them your way. And so people are merchandising or Merchandising the idea, but uh, science has not figured it out just yet. So my research uh, was a little bit frustrated by the fact that they hadn't really found them in humans yet. Um, anything that they could refine, any good studies that were out there. Um, pretty much the closest thing I found to science was documented a few years ago in uh in this documentary here wow never ceases to amaze me what cologne are you gonna go with london gentleman or wait no 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 hold on blackbeard's delight no she gets a special cologne it's called sex panther by odion it's illegal in nine countries yep yeah. It's made with bits of real panther, so you know it's good. It's quite pungent. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it's a formidable scent. <laughs> it stings the nostrils in a good way. Yeah. Brian, I'm going to be honest with you. That smells like pure gasoline. They've done studies, you know. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Well, let's go see if we can make this little kitty purr. <laughs> And that was about it for pheromones for me. The um, going to the scorecard on this common sense uh, that I found it mirrors yours. We know they exist somewhere, um, so if you can find them, it probably wouldn't be a bad thing to try and exploit. Total agreement there. Uh, it makes sense that we'd have them too, and we've all been in that place where we have some weird attraction to somebody that we cannot explain any other way. This fits right in. It does beg the question though, if you induce that, is it just to put the hook in or, or now would you be uh, constantly dependent on that, having to redose all the time um, at the risk of divorce? So another question unanswered. Going back to solid evidence, none. Again, a lot of suspicions, a lot of leads that lead absolutely nowhere. So uh, it's it's something that it's it's a no one knows if it's a snipe hunt or if they're onto it, but everyone senses that they're close when they're looking at it. So yeah, it's it is uh, definitely not solid evidence. So the question is, would do it? And this is where Jackson and I differ a little bit, which is you know I. At the end of the day, maybe there isn't solid evidence, but you know, if you've got the money and you want to try something new, maybe even works on a placebo level if you feel like you're putting out the right vibes, uh, give it a shot. Why not? You know, put it in an environment where uh, you know you expect maybe more of a a sense to come from somebody if you're trying to you know make friends and see what happens. I. Uh end up talking shit as much as humanly possible about placebo medicine in my clinic. Um, I try and do it politically. It doesn't always come off that way. Uh, and then on this show, we try and destroy placebo medicine uh, that hasn't been proven. So for me to use it, uh, I feel like that might just be a, a step too far in the, in the hypocrite lane for me. I'll, uh, when it comes to attracting the opposite sex, um, mm -hmm. by artificial means, just stick to, uh, the um, nice sports cars and 
and um, and the pretty shiny things. And when when the pathogen that you're running up against is a lack of confidence, then that's that's the one time when maybe placebo uh, has a position in the world. The uh, the closest thing I've used to pheromones is accidentally walking out to a bar in my scrubs and then just you know pretending that um, I just didn't have time in between saving lives and, and getting home and cleaning up. So. Mm -hmm. And it's odd, right? That you're doing something dirty and at the same time becoming the maximum douche. Right. That's, it's, uh, it seems like a contradiction. It, it does. But, you know, as, as the users of pheromones have shown it, uh, you'll do whatever it takes. And Hey, it works. That's if a sad it works, thing. It works. So, yeah. it's, so it's on you ladies. So if, uh, if throwing some magic, uh, potion on, it'll give you the confidence, uh, make you feel invincible that it might relay into, uh, some success just based off of that. So I think that should do it. It's a, uh, it's still a grand medical mystery. It hasn't stopped people from merchandising it one day. There might be some evidence and then uh, we'll all be wearing it. And it's just going to be one big orgy. Till next time.